Now to another country right next to the United States that also is coping with violence. Mexican officials have announced the arrest of a major target in that country's drug wars. Marched before the cameras this morning under heavy guard, Edgar Valdez Villarreal was a long way from his high school football days in Laredo, Texas. His coach had nicknamed him the Barbie for his green eyes and fair skin, and the moniker stuck. But now, at 37 years old, he stands accused as one of Mexico's top drug traffickers. The alleged kingpin was arrested yesterday outside Mexico City without incident. This arrest is the result of intelligence work and actions carried out by the federal police. Throughout this investigation, we exchanged information with various United States agencies, as well as the National Defense and Navy Secretariats and the Attorney General's Office. The arrest was a rare success for Mexico's president, Felipe Calderon. His government has waged a war against drug cartels since 2006, and nearly 30,000 people have been killed. Valdez had been locked in a vicious war of succession within the Beltran Leva cartel. The organization's namesake, Arturo Beltran Leva, died in a hail of gunfire last December as Mexican authorities closed in on him. U.S. authorities had put a two million dollar bounty on Valdez. He's under indictment in Atlanta for drug trafficking, but there was no word on whether he'd be extradited. For more on the arrest, we're joined now by National Public Radio's Jason Bobian in Mexico City. Jason, thank you for talking with us. First of all, they caught him alive. How significant is that? It, it's very significant because obviously he can be important in terms of other investigations, in terms of digging into uh, the, the workings of these cartels. Yes, it's very important that, that they caught him alive. Uh, and the hope is that they will be able to get more information about the functioning of, of other cells, other parts of the Beltran Label organization that had splintered after Arturo was, was, was gunned down by the Mexican Marines in December of 2009. How big a victory is this for the Mexican government? This is really huge in terms of the timing. For President Calderon, he really needed a, a good news story at the moment. Last week, you had the worst massacre in this entire drug war, with 72 migrants killed by the Zetas, one of the drug cartels that, that operates primarily just below Laredo and Brownsville, Texas. They actually operate all over Mexico, but that's sort of their home base. Um, they're accused of, of gunning down 72 migrants. That's ob obviously the worst massacre that's occurred in, in what's a, an incredibly bloody drug war here. And, and just the same day that Valdez was captured, there was a 12-hour gun battle that went on just below Tamaulipas in, in, in Veracruz, in which the army was, was trying to, to catch these, these gunmen. Uh, this went on almost all day. There's a sense in Mexico that things have really gotten out of control in terms of security. When you get out and talk to people, it's the main concern that people have. So this capture of Valdez for Calderon is, is a chance to say, look, we are making progress. We're bringing down some of these top leaders. and um, have faith in us and even though it's getting more and more violent we're, if we push forward we can succeed now valdez has an interesting background he was born in laredo texas he played high school football tell us more about that yes uh, by all accounts he grew up in a very middle class environment in in laredo texas and went on to to become a small-time marijuana dealer on the, on the northern side of the border in the U.S., in Texas. Then he got in with the Mexican cartels and really took off from there. His ability to move between the two worlds w was quite effective. Uh, officials here say that when he was captured um, yesterday, he was moving a ton of cocaine a month into the United States. Uh, he moved very rapidly through the ranks. Originally, he was with the Sinaloan cartel, where the Beltran Leivas were working with the S Sinaloan cartel at that point. Then when the Beltran Leivas broke away, he came with them, was one of their the leaders of a group of hitmen that they had called Los Negros. Uh, he's also known as being one of the most brutal men in this entire drug war, in a, in a drug war in which you know, tens of thousands of people have been killed. Uh, he's accused of, of, of orchestrating the murders of, of hundreds of people through this, this group, the Los Negros, that worked for the Beltran Levas. Eventually, when Arturo was, was gunned down, he split off and was trying to work on his own and run his own cartel. 
and in fact uh, trying to to set up his own drug operation and i was reading today that there were a number of people who uh, were happy to turn in information about him when he broke away um, from the, the, the Beltran Labs, and the Beltran Labs were sort of falling apart, it became incredibly bloody in the, in the areas where they were working, particularly in Cuernavaca, which is just below Mexico City. Um, this is, is known as a, a sort of vacation resort for a lot of people from Mexico, from Mexico City, and it's a place that has a reputation for very, being very peaceful. Well, um, La Barbie, Valdez, turned this into a uh, basically a, a war zone. He was fighting for control of these routes that, that the Beltran Leivas had had. They were stringing up bodies off of highway overpasses and decapitating uh, their enemies. It, it really did become incredibly violent. And there's even a suggestion that maybe he was involved in turning in Arturo and giving over information to the Mexican Navy so that they were actually able to take down Arturo Beltran Leyva, at that point his boss. Uh, so the, it does appear that there's a lot of infighting going on, and this is part of what, what President Calderon is trying to do. He's trying to disrupt the, the, the structures of these cartels, knock them off at the top, and, and break them into smaller groups that are easier for the government to contain and to control. And Jason, finally, quickly, we understand they're now planning to, to have him tried in the U.S. On, on what would the charges be and why? Well, he was facing charges in the U.S. for, for moving tons of cocaine into the eastern seaboard between 2004 and 2006. So there was a standing indictment for him in the United States for, for drug smuggling. So that would probably be the main charge, obviously, that, that, he, that he would face. And there, there is a, a desire here to move him out of Mexico so that he's not inside the prison system, not able to keep trying to, to gain power inside the, these cartels. Jason Bobby, and uh, we thank you for your reporting, joining us from Mexico City. You're welcome.